Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. I'm going to finish reading, I'm not going to finish reading, I'm going to start in on, I guess it's our fourth reading of B. Lopez de Castro et al., uh, their paper in the Accident Analysis and Prevention Number 60 magazine, 2013, pages 231 to 234. The title of the article is Testing the Validity of the International Atomic Energy Agency Safety Culture Model. And we have heard that it, no one's ever really tried it. There's been no empirical testing. Hmm, what a coinky dinky. So this is their method for verifying the safety culture model. Number two is the method. 2.1, first study, testing face validity. 2.11, purpose of the study. Researching new changed or previously unexamined scale items should at a minimum be judged on its face validity. Face validity refers to the extent to which a measure reflects what it is intended to measure. It is not about what the model actually measures, but what it superficially appears to measure. Face validity refers to the extent to which a measure reflects what it is intended to measure. So, a teaspoon is a teaspoon, I guess. Uh, improving the face validity of a model, a test or a measurement instrument in general will not ensure the improvement of its construct validity. However, face validity is a requirement for a measurement instrument to function effectively in practical situations. Anastasi, 1976. The purpose of this first model is to test the face validity of the IAEA safety culture model by investigating to what extent the attributes of the model appear to reflect what they are supposed to measure, that is, whether or not the 37 attributes of the model appear to be valid in our sample. Hmm. Hypothesis number one. The hypothesis says the attributes of the model will appear in appear to measure what they are intended to measure, showing evidence of face validity. So we're going to assume that the IAEA is correct in what they say they're doing, right? 2.21, development of the survey. The IAEA safety culture was converted into a survey form. Attributes and dimensions are separated into two different documents that make up the survey. The first document included the instructions for completing the exercise and the model's 37 attributes mixed randomly and numbered from 1 to 37. The second document included the five dimensions of the model labeled from A to E. The labeling of the attributes with numbers and dimensions with letters was done to avoid biased answers based on potential cognitive associations between numbers and letters. It is worth noting that this second document included the labels, i.e., or ergo, um, accountability for safety is clear. Oh, I see. So on the second document, it had what it was supposed to go to. Whew. They make it so official. And not the descriptions of the dimensions. The reasons behind this choice were twofold. First, the descriptions were given by the IAEA overlapped with the attributes of the model. Using the descriptions instead of the labels could have biased the answers of our participants who, as it will be explained in the section 2.14, were asked to match the attributes to the dimensions of the model. Second, the descriptions of the dimensions, however additional and rich about the I wait, excuse me. Second, the description of the dimensions provided additional and rich information about the IAEA model. However, when putting a model into practice, researchers and practice practitioners often only consider the labels of dimensions. And for this reason, the adequacy of the accuracy of these labels must be ensured.
<laughs> okay, I'm going to spare you guys rereading that because you can go back and replay it. I'll reread it. I thought about this last night. I go back and reread something when you can just stop the video and listen to it again. That's hilarious because I don't get that. I For myself, I need to reread that whole thing. I'm slow on this stuff. Okay, so I'll spare you that one. <laughs> The next step was to translate the survey into Spanish, since it was the native language of the target sample. The back translation technique was chosen, as it is the best approach to preserve the functional and conceptual equivalence of words and sentences. Back translation is the translation of a survey instrument that has already been translated into a foreign language back to the original language. Two certified translators performed this task. The forward translation, English to Spanish, was done by one of them, whereas the other one carried out the back translation, Spanish into English. Afterwards, the two translators met to analyze any divergence on the forward translated, the original, and the back translated version. And as a result, they agreed by consensus. That means they both agreed on a translation that accurately reflected the intent of the wording in the original language. 2.13 Sampling Procedure Face validity has typically been tested by participants who do not have prior knowledge about the construct under a study. A model, test, or a measurement instrument has face validity when... What's that word? When it appears valid to non-experts. Oh, okay, I get it. Face validity. Because if it's true for one person, it's true for everyone of these. Lay persons. Oh, and then they're giving a name. Satori 2010. Lay persons by Cronbach 1984. Untrained observers. Anastasi 1976. Or in the words of Litwin 1995. Untrained judges, such as your sister, boyfriend, or squash partner, page 35. In this sense, it, you know, I'm not going to read you these references because they have lots of references. I'll end up reading a lot of names, and I think it will taint, I don't know, like, not tainted. I guess that's the wrong word, like tamper the, the sentiment. In this sense, the value of the studies in organizational management have favored the use of students to assess the face validity of their models and measurement instruments. The opinions provided by these students have helped researchers to decide what items their proposed instruments should retain or eliminate. For all these reasons, we decided to test the face validity of the IAEA model with a sample of graduate students. Participants were untrained judges for this study as they were not knowledgeable about safety culture. Furthermore, they were not familiar with the IAEA safety culture model and had never worked within the nuclear industry. All surveys were completed and returned to the researchers. Therefore, a response rate of 100% was obtained. <laughs> wow. Any survey showing systematic response patterns of having more than three unanswered items was dropped from the data set. Wow, that's pretty stiff. As a result, 290 out of the 297 surveys returned were accepted for data analysis. So N equals 290. The final sample was composed of 110 students of psychology. 96 of labor relations, and 84 of tourism. The students averaged 24 years of range, age ranging from 18 to 55. 72% of the students were female, and 80% had previous work experience. Wow. Huh. Okay, I, it feels like I've been reading a good long while. I'm going to stop because this is going to get really interesting. How long is it? Yeah, it's just at 10 minutes. I'm going to hang up here, folks, because i got the radio show tomorrow. By the way, please join us tomorrow. Dana Durnford is going to join us on the radio on UCY-TV, 8 o'clock 
Pacific Standard Time, uh, if you see that before then. Um, and I'll be posting another video on this soon. Next time I'll read more. I've just had a really long day. On the weekends, for sure, I'll read a little bit longer. But I think 10 to 20 minutes is fine. Put your courage feet on, you guys, and um, let's at least find out what really it is. Huh? Ciao.